It's been 30 days since the last Blood Bowl 3 update, and I'm not even sure if this update was published to console. Season 1 is about to start in around 19 days, May 25th, and it's going to run for 3 months. We're going to review the roadmap, so we kind of set our expectations a little bit because a lot is riding on Season 1, and I feel like the community is putting too much emphasis on Season 1 because I posted a rather scathing article in the community tab, and a lot of people were really riding on Season 1 to change and fix Blood Bowl 3, and I just don't... I, I just feel like they're setting themselves up for failure or disappointment at this moment in time. So let's dive into this update. Let's talk about the roadmap. Let's take a look at the shop. We're going to test one or two of the bugs if we can. Right now, there is a major bug with the friendly match. I can't test that one right now, but apparently if you go into friendly play or friendly match with your friends, the game doesn't start. So it's really hard for me to test that, mostly because I don't have any friends that play Blood Bowl 3. So let's review the, the roadmap. I really want to touch on this roadmap because a lot of people are putting a lot of emphasis on Season 1, acting like it's going to save Blood Bowl 3. So these seasons are going to run for three months each. Season 1, we get a new free faction. We get that faction because of the way Blood Bowl 3 handled the launch of Blood Bowl 3. The developers handled that launch, the preseason. So we do get that faction for free, but Season 2 and Season 3 factions are going to cost you money. So I feel like that needs to be reiterated a little bit so people aren't expecting Season 2 to get free items or free items in Season 3. There's also no major fixes coming in Season 1. A lot of the quality of life changes are in Season 2 and Season 3, such as replay mode, spectator mode, league league tools, things like that. Those are still a ways off. So people are really setting themselves up for disappointment if they're looking forward to Season 1. So what we're going to get in Season 1 is just that new faction, a new blood pass, new customization. I don't understand how the developers are going to just update customization every three months and expect to generate profit. And this was, was part of my post over in the community tab. It's like they just want you to come in at that three-month mark, buy something, and they really don't care if you play the game beyond that. I mean, the blood pass may change a few things, and they have talked about how they're going to implement monetization in the future. So we're going to see that in around 20 days. And then obviously like in-match readability and optimization. That's pretty much been the first six months, almost the first three months of Blood Bowl because it launched in February 23rd and then it's May 25th. That's only three months. So we've had some fixes since then and I really feel like our console players are suffering a bit because their updates are going to be fewer and far between. So they may might not get as many updates as we get. So we've been getting them monthly, it seems like, on PC. And it takes around two months for the console players to get anything. So let's talk about this right here. Under friendly match, this is a bug that's been reported. Play online. I have no friends, so it's not something I can really test. But apparently, if you choo if each player chooses their teams, they cannot actually play the match. It just disconnects, or there's no option to do it. So if you're being, if this bug is affecting you, please let me know down in the comments so we can kind of get it like pushed up a little bit because I've seen it in the discord and there's only two or three posts of it so that's not something we can test but now let's go over to the shop I think it's important to touch on the shop because we reported something last season or last video where you could just buy products infinitely which it looks like it seems to be resolved right now so what we were doing last time I don't know if they refunded my currency I don't remember how much I had but you could basically just like buy a helmet and then buy that helmet again and buy it again and buy it again and buy it again even though it was supposed to unlock permanently for all characters. So we're going to be playing with the Skaven today here in a few minutes. So let's just take a look at the Skaven real quick. It's all the way at the bottom. Is that alphabetical? Okay, that is alphabetical. LMNOP. All right. So if we buy this thrower helmet, we should only have to buy it, buy it once. I hate that right click back. So it's, can you rotate these guys? Why is it left click to rotate and right click back? I always feel like it's right click to rotate. Regardless, so when we push, purchase this helmet, so let's purchase. I believe Skaven only has one thrower. It drops by a, a few points. Then if we go back, can we buy this again? We can no longer buy this item again. I really harped on that in our last video. So they are doing a, a few fixes. So it's nice to see that. But <laughs> if those fixes are leading to breaking the friendly match play online, they're really not testing them. Also, like in these bug fixes, it's like relatively minor things. Like they've changed a few placeholders. They haven't done too, too much with the game. Beyond that, I still don't like that right click back. If we bring up the little notes, 
Um, so a few things I'm just going to highlight just so you kind of get the gist of this update. So the one that we just tested right now is fixed an issue that allowed the purchase of multiple instances of unlimited items. Obviously, I'm glad it took them a month to fix that, but that's good that it's at least fixed and hopefully they refunded our currency. I'm, I don't remember how much we had at the beginning of, um, of the month. Next, and this is just all bug fixes. There's no real quality of life changes or quality of life updates, modified base cursor speed and acceleration for controllers. If you play on controller, please let me know down in the comments. Let me know if it feels nice to you. I saw a lot of posts. They don't really like the cursors with controllers. Corrected camera orientation issues during the campaign. I always felt like the camera was a bit off, not so much in campaign, but even when you do like those brutals or um, injury cameras, like if you have like a four foot scaven getting like smashed by Nurgle, it always felt like the camera was like five feet off. Like it made no sense, so you couldn't really see anything. Audio settings are now applied instantly when launching the game. I don't really know what the issue was with those. Um, and then like replace a placeholder image of the goblin runner when loading the image of a new tile. I guess that's a, that's a good little fix. And then the rest are just like rare crashes, rare, rare freezes, corrected default ball carrier sequence game option. That's fine. And then fixed texture, texture issues with Skaven thrower body parts. So we have a Skaven thrower in our Skaven team. We're going to zoom in and take a look at those textures and just see what that takes, a, what that looks like. And then, yeah, overall, it's just very minor bug fixes. I'm going to copy and paste this into the description. So if you don't want to go to the Steam page, you can just click on the description and take a look at the changes that were made and hit that join button, hit that subscribe button. A lot of people enjoy these Blood Bowl 3 videos, but they do not subscribe. And it would be cool if you guys subscribe so we can start building a cool little community. So at season one, we can start a league and play together. So like I said, we need to be our Skaven team. And it shows us all of this. I kind of wish there was like a next button instead of a back button. It makes more sense to me. And then it brings all of this up if we wanted to change our formations. We don't have any formations. I would like to see this changed a little bit. Like I just want default formations. Like right, like that's something that's needed. Instead of just creating a formation, you should just be able to like copy them from somewhere. Because if I make a bunch of formations for this team, it's going to instantly delete and I delete the team, it's going to delete all my formations. So it's not really worth um, making a lot of formations. So we don't really want to we can take on these guys. Who are these guys? These are the Imperial Nobility. Um, that's fine. We're just going to play a quick little match, see how it feels. I didn't put any of my customization on my Skaven thrower. So let's zoom in. Let's take a look at our one cheerleader. See how we completely feel. Take a look at the textures. See how the game feels. See if there's any instances of crashes. There was this goblin guy. I do want to take a look at one thing, and it's where we, like, pause the game several times. Ooh, I have that guy. And I have some ninjas. So be aggressive versus our imps or the Imperial Nobility. Apparently there were a lot of pause issues on this screen, and it's been mostly fixed. We did test this wizard and a few other things, but nothing we can really do. We do The inducements aren't really going to work right now because we only have 15,000. So we're just gonna hit ready right there. All right, so we want to receive the ball. I think that's really important, especially as us as the Skaven. All right, so let's take a look, see what we all have. Well, that's a big old dude. He's going to, like, damage our little weak little Skaven dudes. So I, this is our thrower, right? Oh, that's our runner. Where's our thrower? Our thrower should be way back here. So apparently this guy was having texture issues, and I apologize, guys. I had a recent... What, what's going on with that guy's arm? How do I rotate? Rotate, rotate. Ooh, it rotates by degrees. Alright, I'm not seeing really any texture issues going on with this guy. I can't get any lower or any closer though. Where's the free camera button? I believe it's C. So he's looking mostly fine. So we shouldn't be too worried about it. It's not too bad. Still relatively bland. But that's just my setup. The camera feels a bit wonky, but it's been a while since I've played this, so let's let's move you up there. Still doesn't feel super friendly. This is our thrower. We're just going to test a few throwing things out. Who's this? This is just a lineman, so he can go push forward. 
We're going to swap that with our runner. We're going to bring him back here. We're going to move you over here. I think this is important. Also, we're going to bring some units back just in case they get that certain um, line. I believe it's rushing that allows them to move forward times two. Linemen are fine where they're at. We're going to bring you back one. We're going to bring this runner back one. Just like that. And our throw is going to be in a good little position. If they kick it too far, we can always move to pick it up. And we have our little rat org doing our rat org thing. They're all stacked up. These linemen, they're fine. So when we pick it up, we can at least move into these linemen. So over here on this right-hand side, we could create a little box, push forward. Ideally, we want to go through the middle. I've been focusing on going on the right-hand side, and I don't think that's really good for this game. So let's just say we are good. Oh, we don't need to save the formation. All right, he's going to throw. Here comes the kickoff. Pitch invasion, D6. So if he... We should be able to give that ball to him, right? He doesn't need to run all the way back to the end zone. All right, so it's a plus three for that pickup. Don't really want to roll a plus three right now. We can move forward. The pitch invasion did take that one guy out. We have no three dice. We have nothing really. We could move forward. All right, so we... Oh, look, these, guys, these two guys are stunned. So if we can dominate this left side, if we can kind of get this guy knocked back out of the ring, that might be really good for us. What's our run? For, like, if we try and make this guy run... Where does he go? We say run over here. It's a plus three to move. So we never want to take that plus three right off the bat. Over here. So we're just going to close this gap a little bit. So there's no dice I want to take right now. So if we like try and tackle that guy, it's a one, one. We could either stun or knock myself down. Not super worth it. So let's just try and build this box but the ball is way over here on this right hand side so what they're going to do is they're going to move forward they're going to put a little bit of pressure on us they're going to cross that line of scrimmage or that main line and we're just going to try and stop them one thing about the ai is they're always going to take those dice those die rolls that allow them to like they're just going to roll the dice just to see if it's in favor of them so we're just going to hold the line we're going to move you over one I think that's fine. We're just going to open up the middle. We're going to hit go. And we're going to try and secure that side a little bit. But we have a good little force right here. So we're going to grab our runner. And the first thing he's going to do is going to pick up this ball. Actually, we want to bring this guy back. So the reason why we want him all the way back is in case we fumble the ball. So let's just do that. He comes all the way back. That's our runner. Honestly, he would, what's it, what's, it? he's plus two pickup. All right. Let's go like this. Let's just get everyone all set up. So the real question is, do we need our thrower by him or do we not need our thrower by him? All right, so let's end this turn. So we're going to pick that up on that plus two. I think plus three is too risky. They're going to do whatever they need to do over here. They're probably going to push us a bit hard. We're going to try and score by turn six, but we're going to see how we feel. Right, and like I said, they're going to come around. We have this area a bit opened up, and if he tries to move through that, he'll just have a bad time. So they're opening up this left flank. They're stacking all their die right there. We didn't really take any rolls right there, so that's really good for us. So we don't have animal savagery going on or anything like that. And let's just see what we get. The game feels relatively smooth. All right, they're stacking that right. They're all trying to get, and they always do that blitz. Like, the AI is so just blitz heavy. It hasn't changed at all. All right, and so he takes the dodge. Like, like we knew that he was going to do that. Like, they always do that. And then that's our turn now. I thought that was a dual knockdown, so I wonder why he's still playing. All right, so now it's turnover. I don't know why this didn't lead to turnover right here. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me because that's a knockdown. So we're going to go like this. We're going to set everyone up. Just like that. I'm going to move these guys forward. Let's 
We're going to take that assist. I think that's really dumb, but we'll take the two die roll. It can't be that bad, right? Obviously, it is that bad. And for some reason... Badly hurt. Take the injured. One player off the field. We step forward one. And the reason why we're stepping forward is because it's going to lock this guy into position. And we really want to take two die right there. We could with that plus one strength. And so we're just cleaning up this right hand side of the field. We're going to try and lock down this left hand side. So we're going to move you right here. All right. So if we declare a throw, so if we run up here, pick up the ball, declare a throw to this guy right here. Since this whole left side is relatively okay, what they're going to do is they're going to run around and then the AI is obviously going to take that random roll because it's what they always do. So we need to be careful with like how we position this AI in this current area. So they have one guy standing up, two guys standing up. They're currently not guarded, so they're going to run more than likely right through here. They'll take these two dodges and then they'll try and step forward one. So we're going to grab this runner right here. We're just going to pull him back a little bit. No real reason for him to be where he's at. The AI is going to take this dodge right here because it's going to allow them to get to where they need to go. We could pick up the ball right here. Take that plus two. Can we declare a handoff now? We can't. So how far can you run? We're going to run to runner to runner. Lineman's going to go all the way over here as well. So ideally, I feel like we should have put him in this position right here. That way he can't, no one can kind of get around our guy. We're going to get our thrower next to them as well. Once our thrower is in position. So basically the only way for them to stop us now is to bring one of their Imperial guys all the way over here, which they're going to do. They're going to challenge both of these roles to try and stop us. We're on turn two. They have one guy way in the back line. They have this guy who hasn't moved. We have two dice, which we're going to take, and hopefully we can knock him back into the left. Let's see what we get. Don't really like the way those dice looks. We got to move. Knock him back. That's going to continue. We are not going to step forward. We're going to stay because if we step forward, we open up that right lane right here. So right now, if he really wants to get by us, he needs to go along the outskirts, and that's going to take him more points. Can we step forward? I believe if we step forward, doesn't it animal savage? We need a plus four to move this guy. I just, I'm not going to take the plus four. Stop. We're in that turn. Turn two for Imperial Nobility. So they're going to stand their guys up first, and then we're going to watch them try and do anything crazy. So let's see. There they stand up. Stand up. Stand up. He's. And, and, uh, like I said, like I said, like I said, like I said, remember how I said? Isn't that exactly what I said would happen? That's exactly what I said would happen. They're going to. The AI is always going to challenge that RNG right there. And then they're always going to take that one step blitz forward. Every time. So when you're playing this game, you need to make sure you take that into consideration. I don't know if it's like that online, if people play more conservative, conservatively. But the AI is going to play a bit more aggressive. So we have this guy down. We have our runner down, which is fine. So now we need to just continue shutting everything down. We have this guy over here. I'm going to put him on top of... So this unit is more than likely going to challenge us over here at some point. They're going to challenge us over here. So we can take these two die and try and knock this guy back off to the left. But remember, when we take this unit and knock him back off to the left, if we don't, if we just get a move instead of a pow or anything like that, and it looks like that's not an option, so we should knock him down. Regardless, he'll stand up and he'll take the blitz. We should be able to knock him straight into the left. And we want to do it with this guy, right? So... Let's just go. Is the assist gonna be enough to come out on top? Why wasn't that showing? That's exactly what my concern was. So I'm a little bummed that that one die isn't showing. If I rotate the camera, does it show? So I thought these were our only options right here, That the, what these would ro roll. So we just wasted that guy right there. So do we take it again, see if we can get the pow. We get the pow, we knock him. He doesn't move. He gets stunned. We take the stun. No injury. All right. So that still opens up this left side. So we could take our runner all the way around. Can we declare a what? Who? We don't need to declare a handoff, right? 
So let's set up for the line of scrimmage. Right, because we're going to be going across the back. Let's get our box going. So this isn't a good see how this corner is open right here. If we put our if we put our runner right there, that means it's if they're gonna put this guy right here, which is going to challenge our dodge. So we need to step him probably one back into the left right there. So what that's going to do, they can either go way around, which they're probably going to do, and then they're gonna try and step forward one for the RNG roll. This guy could run through the middle and try and get on our flank. This guy's down, so what he'll probably stand him up and blitz him next turn. So we don't need to do too much with that. This whole left flank is kind of a cluster. Everyone's locked in, and I don't really like it. So we're going to get some of our linemen over there. We're going to open up some of these lanes for ourselves. And I want him right there. Are you? OK. No reason for you not to go that way. He's coming to help his buddy. That's going to hurt. All right, so we have a relatively good sized box right there. The AI can step through that middle and just get right on top of us. But that's a risk I'm willing to take. We have this lineman right here. This guy's not going to run all the way around. Even though he can, he could just run along this outside. And we do have this that we need to deal with. So what we need to do is we need to figure out what to do with this second lineman. So let's just set him up right here. I think that's a good fair position. Just in case we need him. Or even like right here would be better. And what that's actually right here is probably the best. Just in case they try and challenge that middle to get close to us, they need to challenge it two separate times. So that's going to open up this, so the AI more than likely is going to run as far around as he can. We're going to right click, and then we can kind of bully this guy, remember. So this is probably our best bully, one die, he's marked. One die with the assist, really dangerous right there. Can this guy do a blitz? Plus two animal savagery. We can do better than plus two, right? If we get this guy off him... That's really, really good for us. So can we roll a plus two? How do you roll a one, bro? Sometimes cute animals like this forget the sport. And embrace their wild side. So we roll we roll three failures right there. Dude, get out of here with that. And why is this still up? So what is this bug right here? So we just rolled three absolute bombs. So we're just going to take the one die right here. Sure. Knock him back. Nothing happens. Okay. My my rat dude. That was so dis that was such a waste of a reroll too. Like what was even the point of that? That was just to be overly aggressive for no reason. So it's the AI's turn. Let's see what we got. All right, he stands up. Does he take any blitz or anything like that? Is he capable of it? He stands up. Yep, there, like, hey, hey, we called it. We called it. We called it twice. We absolutely called that twice, right? We knew that he was going to stand up right here and blitz forward. I remember specifically talking about that. Like, he's going to stand up. He's going to blitz. We also said this guy's going to challenge these two guys right here, which is why they're positioned the way they are, and they got turned over. Like, dude, we are so good at this game now. So how far can, this will be, we're gonna keep pushing, we're gonna keep, how far can you run? So if we go this far, how far can, what's, a, what, what, what's our alignment? No, we're not gonna throw. This is what we're going to do. So these guys are going to attempt to come along the backside which is fine. We just can't. It's going to be a tricky little box to pull off. So you go all the way. We're, you're going to stop short one. We're two. I don't like being on this edge right here because what's going to happen is if we stack a guy, they could knock us into a guy, into a guy, which could kind of ruin it for us. Here might be a bit safer, but what's going to happen are, is these two guys, these three guys are all going to challenge the rear side of this box. And this guy is so far back that he's able to challenge the front. And we have no real way to kind of harass that on the back end. Right? Unless we just say, hey, one, one roll that die. One roll that. 
which is what we're going to do. So this guy's going to stand up. This guy's going to charge us next turn. So this is what we do. We just take it anyway. We can't go too far forward. Remember, we said turn six. He's going to run. I think that's relatively fair. That's one box, two box. So if he comes around, he's going to try and stop us directly in front. I don't really think there's like a good way to do this. I mean, we, we can take the one die. This guy's going to stand up and blitz next turn. So do we just say, do we just try and force the the rolls right here? Do we just try and lock this guy up? Does that make sense? Or do we box in? Because he's going to come, we don't, do we have enough people to even box in? So if we even, because he's going to go all the way over to here now. I kind of feel like he's going to run all the way over to here. So where's our other runner? How far can you go? Let's go like that. How far can you go? Can you get right there? That locks him up. We take a blitz. So this guy goes right here. What's that? And then we take the blitz with our with our lineman right here. So we take this blitz right here. And that should be okay. This thrower is mostly safe. So it's unfortunate right here that this gap's filling in, is filled up. This guy's going to run and lock us down all the way on the back. I believe he should be able to run that far. So it's un that's going to be really unfortunate that that's going to happen, especially since we don't have really good linemen right there. This guy's mainly my concern. So, and then this guy's going to come into play soon too. One die, one die. I don't really need to do anything with that. So we take the blitz right here because we need this guy to go away. I want him to blitz that way. But I want him to knock him to the right. Because if we come up here and knock him back, that's going to allow him to break free. And we're going to step forward on the blitz to lock him up. All right. This is really good. And we knock him back that way. Stunned, no injury. That's really good for us. That means we're right on schedule for our turn six. Him being stunned is really good for us. I th this is still a bit dangerous. This is a bit dangerous. And then these two are a bit dangerous. These guys aren't really pinned or anything. So, I mean, we could be like back. We could back off this guy and say, hey, but for a plus three dodge, it's not really worth it. And we can kind of roll this. But I don't want to loot. I don't want to keep opening this up. So we get assisted plus one strength. We roll a die. We could knock each other down. And that's really fortunate for us. And we knock him back this way. We step. We do. We, we don't need to step forward, but we can. We're not going to. All right. That's all our turns. All right. So let's see how this plays out. He stands up, he blitzes. He runs, he runs, stands up, no blitz, stands up, blitz, no blitz, stands up, no blitz. Alright. That's a thrower. So we're we're free to touch down right here. We're turn five, we're one turn early. They have three turns. Their rollers down. This guy's going to be a complete jerk to us this whole time. So we could just go for the touchdown, call it a day. That's three. This is our turn five, right? So is that too early? Can they score in three turns? If our defense is really bad, absolutely they can. 
So then if they score, that's 1-1. One, one. They start with the ball, that's 2-1. So if we stop them, it goes 1-0. Oh. Then they score, then they start with the ball next turn, that's 1-1. One, one. Turn six might be too late. So we're gonna try anyway, we're just gonna go goal. And we're just going to get that touchdown for the game, just to show you guys that I'm that good at getting touchdowns. All right, guys, that's the video. Let me know if you like the update.